AI isn't killing DevOps jobs, it's creating them. I read the latest Linux Foundation report so you don't have to, and I'll share all the insights that are going to help you land your six-figure DevOps job. So the first insight from the report is that AI creates more jobs than it eliminates. Over half of organizations are understaffed in cloud and platform engineering. 68% are short in AI and ML operations. AI operations is just DevOps with models in the pipeline. New label, same fundamentals. Titles are changing, but the skills remain the same. Us knowledge workers, we're all afraid that AI is going to take our job someday. But if you're working in the DevOps space, you're actually pretty safe for now. Because AI agents are proving to be rather underwhelming, and they don't have the capacity to understand large, complex, distributed systems. You still need humans for that. So for now, we're pretty safe. And when you look at the impact of AI on hiring, we see something very different that you usually hear on YouTube, right? The talent shortage is especially acute in AI and ML engineering and operations, where 68% of organizations report being understaffed. So this report actually shows you that cloud computing, platform engineering are both understaffed, 59%, 56%, and 68% on AI and ML operations. So what do AI engineers do? Well, if we take a look at the required tooling, so the, the tools that are most sought after, here we see Kubernetes, Docker, and continuous deployment. So the, it's just a different title for the same work that we're already doing. It's 90% the same with just a 10% specialization. And Kubernetes is the key here. So most AI workloads run on Kubernetes because it's so scalable. ChatGPT runs on Kubernetes, and that should tell you something. These models, these tools that are being served to millions of people, it's, uh, they're actually being run on Kubernetes. And those tools are only going to grow in the future, right? So imagine what this is going to do to Kubernetes. So in my opinion, the skills remain the same. It's just the title that is changing a little bit differently here. It's the same stuff, just different marketing. So my advice is to focus on skills rather than titles and master the fundamentals like Linux, move on to containers, then Kubernetes, and secure it, securing those. The, 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 these are the foundations that you really need to learn and if you learn those, then you're not going to be out of a job anytime soon. The DevOps engineer title may be disappearing or they might put a different label on it, but the skills are always going to be in demand. I run a five node Kubernetes cluster in my basement. This single line in your resume will make you stand out from 99% of candidates. The report shows that when people hire, Hands-on experience emerged as the most valued factor at 95% importance. Companies need skills, not diplomas. They will hire proof. Your action plan, build a home lab. The report is very clear that hands-on experience is extremely important when people make a hiring decision. And here we see in this graph that it is actually valued much more than formal college or university degrees. And the key thing here is that this hands-on experience does not necessarily mean experience that you get in a job. You can get this experience at home. When I started out as a DevOps engineer, I had no, I had zero tech experience, zero relevant experience, but I had been running massive RuneScape bot farms in my free time, setting up Linux servers, setting up scaling, all of that. And I was basically a DevOps engineer for my private stuff. I had zero practical, like formal experience, but telling this story helped me to land my first DevOps job because people saw that I had skills and that I was passionate about what I wanted to do. And I'm so happy because now I have the Linux Foundation supporting what I've been claiming all this time, that in order to land a DevOps job, you cannot just focus on watching video courses. You actually have to go hands-on and build stuff and show that. And this is the number one thing that I teach my students and it is working for them as well. For the past few months, we've been landing jobs every single week. We have Brad, we have Frederick, we've got Jakub, we, we've got Peter, we've got Leonard. All of these jobs are all landed. But if you look at what they're actually saying, if we take a look at what 
what Brad is saying here. Here he shares the interview process consisted of four rounds and they all lasted an hour and covered similar topics. And look at what he says. The home lab came up as questions in every call where we talked about customized external secrets and how it would improve it. It became less of a technical interview and more of an open conversation about what I had built, why I choose it to build it that way and how they achieve similar outcomes with their tooling. This is what I've been saying all along. If you build something, then the interview turns into a conversation rather than an interrogation. And let's look at Daniil here. He is saying something very similar. Here he says, talking about my home lab and all the other little projects I made was for the biggest part of my interview process. I barely even got any other technical questions because there was so much to talk about. So this is part of the, the Kubecraft system that I teach. I teach them exactly how to build a Kubernetes home lab and how to present that to employers. And as you see, this is working really well. So your, your main action step here is to start a home lab today. And you can start this for free. Just find an old laptop, install Linux on it and get going. That's the most important thing. Don't think you need all these fancy racks with li lights and all of that. An old laptop with Linux on, on it is a home lab and that's where you start. Now, if you want some more guidance and if you want to learn how to do this properly in order to land jobs within weeks, you can check out the link below and I'm happy to show you. AI does not mean that you're going to lose your job. It opens up new opportunities. To stay relevant, you must keep up with this new technology. In the next five years, the DevOps engineers who have experience with AI will have an advantage over those who don't. The opportunity is massive. Ride the wave. Enjoy the hype. Don't resist it. Be excited about it. The important thing here is to become AI native as a DevOps engineer. So how do we do that? I personally have been incorporating AI in my life ever since it came out, basically. I was very excited when that first started happening. And I recently listened to a podcast with the CEO of Anthropic, where he says something very interesting. The interviewer asks him, how should people go about learning AI? And he simply says, just start playing with the models every day. Get a sense of how they work by playing with them. And I've taken this to heart. Basically everything that I do, I now incorporate AI into that workflow. So not just for technical things like coding, but also in my personal life. For example, I, I had a tent plug that was missing and I took a picture of a similar tent plug because I, 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 I tried searching for them and I couldn't find the manufacturer. It wasn't being made anymore. So I took a picture of it, it analyzed the picture and then it found some obscure manufacturer for me that actually still makes those. So these are the things that AI can be extremely useful for. And the purpose of all of this is that you get a sense of what AI can and cannot do. So by using it, you also get a sense of its boundaries and where it, the capabilities stop. And this is the, the experience that the, and the knowledge that you cannot get from watching YouTube videos or, or, or reading books. Another way of saying is that you start to build up an intuition for it. And here's why this is important. Companies get really excited about AI and then managers will say, yeah, let's put some budget in and then let's dump some money into this and magically an AI solution is going to appear. They get promised from the media and salespeople that everything is possible and the sky is the limit. But these organizations actually need someone to maybe put a break on it and say, well, it's great that we want to do it, but the current models actually don't they're not really suited for this or that use case. And you can only get that sense of experience by just using the models every single day. And this is where the money is. If you actually have this experience and this, this sense of cap the capabilities of AI, then you become a very valuable person to any organization who wants to implement it. Because you as a DevOps engineer, you already have very deep technical knowledge. If you just augment that with the newest, latest technology in AI, then you're going to be a very valuable person in terms of AI transitions within companies. This also opens up lots of consulting possibilities for the future. So Think about if you're already making six figures as a DevOps engineer right now, imagine how much people will pay you if you start consulting in this kind of area. The opportunities here are huge. The DevOps engineers who are going to make the most money in 2026 are those who have learned AI, 
to learn how to work with it, not against it. So let's define your action plan. If you're a DevOps engineer already, I assume that you're already a master of Linux, Kubernetes, containers, and security. The, we have to start there. If, you ha if you're not, then stop watching this video and, and start building those skills first. Next, we're gonna look into building projects because remember from the report, we learned that people value hands-on experience most. So how you can incorporate AI in your home lab, for example, is you can just get a second machine with a cheap GPU. It doesn't have to be, you, you don't have to like start hosting 32 billion parameter models at home. It's simply about learning how this works, right? So you can start by getting a machine with a GPU in it, then install a container runtime and just first try to just run models on a GPU through a container runtime. That's the first step. The next step is to actually do that in Kubernetes. K3S has some good documentation on this. If you want my advice, look at this NVIDIA container runtime and learn how to mount your GPU into pods and if you learn how to do this well, you're gonna make a lot of money. And another thing is that while you are doing these projects, then also start using AI as a teammate or a, a friendly mentor that you can, you, you can utilize. So ask it questions and take everything it says with a grain of salt. But with everything you do, just start sparring with the, AI, with the models, with, uh, with Claude. I really like Claude. ChatGPT is fine, but I prefer Claude. And just, just start talking to it and involve it in your decisions and be critical of what it says. Give pushback. And very often you will see that, oh, you're right, I was hallucinating there, right? So it's exactly this edge where a junior that comes from the street has no chance of, of, of competing with you because you need that sort of depth of technical expertise to verify whether the models are hallucinating or not. But you need to practice this. You need to get a sort of radar for this. And you can only get that by practicing. So involve AI as you are doing these projects. And if you really want to supercharge this, document your journey, make LinkedIn posts of what you do, start a blog, and you will have recruiters in your inbox guaranteed. And this is the method that my students use to land jobs every single week, as you can see here. I have everything figured out for you. All of the systems are in place. So if you want to fast track this process, you can click the link down below for more information. Thank you so much for watching. Start using AI and I'll see you in the next video.